Hello, my name is Mark Turner and I'm a product trainer for Oxford University Press. In this how-to video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the best use of Oxford Scholarship Online. Oxford Scholarship Online is a research library that offers quick and easy access to award-winning scholarship from Oxford University Press. Oxford Scholarship Online is delivered on the University Press Scholarship Online platform, along with academic monograph content from our list of leading university presses from around the world. This means that when you carry out searches within OSO, you have the choice to cross-search all the content on the OSO platform by expanding your search to include results from our partner presses. Let's have a look at some of the features and benefits of Oxford Scholarship Online. We're going to start with the home page of Oxford Scholarship Online. This is where, obviously, you can see information about the website. You can see, for example, a running total of titles on the site, as well as the subject area coverage. All of the latest developments and news about the site can be accessed via the news feed. For example, announcements about content updates, news on prize-winning titles, and so on. Here you will also find a recently featured book from the site. From the homepage, you're also able to download an Excel spreadsheet of all the titles currently available on Oxford Scholarship Online, which gives you at-a-glance visibility of the content available on the site. Also from this page, you can search, you can advance search, and you can browse by subject. This is where we're going to start. I'm going to look into neuroscience. This takes us into the subject page for neuroscience. Here, if you scroll down, you can see the full list of titles for this subject area. There are 137 titles available at the moment. The carousel at the top of the page allows you to flick through a selection of the latest titles. You can see in the left bar here, there are various options for refining. You could refine by recently published titles, you can look into sub-disciplines within neuroscience here, and you can also order by publication year and those titles to which you have full text access. You can also, moving across the bar at the top here, just reorder the results rather than refine. I'm going to reorder this. At the moment it's showing in alphabetical order, but I'm going to reorder by publication date and show the most recently published books at the top of the list. Now this list has come through, I'm going to look at the first book on the list, so Visual Aspects of Dyslexia. Now we're looking at the front page of the book itself. There are several interesting bits to look at just here. For example, you can see there's the abstract, the keywords for the book, which are all linked, as you can see across here, and the bibliographic information. As well as the publication history here, you can see at book level and also at chapter level, there's a DOI, a digital object identifier. Now this is a static reference to the web page, which means that if a lecturer refers to this in a reading list, they know that in 10 years' time, that reference is going to be exactly the same. It will still work. Also on the book homepage, you'll find information about the author affiliations. And obviously, if we go further down, the navigation through the book itself. The contents page is just further down here. One other important thing to point out just before we get to the chapter level is the page numbering. All of the chapters in here contain references to page numbers. Those page numbers will be exactly the same as in the print version. If a lecturer is using the print copy, they can still refer students to a particular page, and students can look up this page online. I'm going to go from here into chapter 3. You can see, once in the content page, there's another navigation feature here. Apart from the left bar, which is now showing the book content, there's also this bar. Each little box on this bar corresponds to a section or chapter of the book. Scrolling down the page, you can see there are several figures and illustrations included in the text. At the bottom of the page in the Bibliography References section, you'll find a Find It in Your Library button. If your library is using a link resolver, this means that you can go along to the references, click on this link, and see instantly if your library is holding a copy. Basically, you're checking your library catalogue from here. I'm going to scroll back to the top of the page now, and just look at one or two of the things that you can do with the text. As well as seeing it on screen, 
You can also download a PDF version of the text, or a printer-friendly version. And if I scroll to the end of this, you can see at the end, there's a QR code. This simply means that you can scan this with your mobile device and view it on that device. All the pages in here have been optimised for mobile, so you should be able to read it perfectly well from here. Now, moving across this bar at the top of the page, at the top right, you can see you can print from there, you can save, and I'll come back to that in a moment, you can get all of the citation information from here as well. And you can see that's in a variety of formats, including the MLA, the APA, and Chicago. And if you want, you can copy and paste these directly into your work, or if you use citation export software, that's available here as well. Moving further across, you can send the page by email, and you can share it on a variety of sites. By clicking on the Save button here, I've saved this content page to the My Work area. This is where you can personalise the website. Even within an institutional subscription here, everybody using the website can save and personalise. The My Work area is always up here at the top right. If I look in there, you'll see you can save your searches and links to your favourite or most used content pages, such as favourite chapters and books, and it will also keep a record of your most recent activity on the site. Now we're going to look at how to search within Oxford Scholarship Online and how to get the most effective results. You can run a search directly from the homepage of Oxford Scholarship Online, you can type in directly, or you can choose to specify your subject specialisations before running the search. Before running a search in Oxford Scholarship Online, it's worth mentioning that the default search option is to return results from all of the partner presses available on University Press Scholarship Online. If you wish to only search for titles available in OSO, you just need to click Oxford Scholarship Online above the search box at the top of the page to delimit the search. In this case, I'm not going to specify any subject specialisations, and I'm going to run a search for obesity. This brings back results from 16 books. If you wish to expand your search results to all of the related content available on OPSO, you can click to see results from OPSO in the Expand Your Search box. I'm going to actually search within these results for the United Kingdom. This narrows it down now to one book, but the searching works on two levels. At the first level, the book level, we're searching the book titles, the chapter titles, the abstracts, and the keywords. If you want to search the whole text of all the books in here, you can move that to a chapter level search. We now have 298 results from across all the books in the collection. Still, you can use the left-hand column to refine the search further. This really is the way of optimising your search results to get the best possible results from Oxford Scholarship Online. You can also take your search beyond Oxford Scholarship Online by using the Oxford Index underbar at the bottom of the screen. If you click on Show Related Links here, this is a way of running the same search across all Oxford University Press content. So you can see results from journal articles, from other books, and from reference entries, for example. I hope this guide has been useful for you. If you have any further queries, you can find a whole range of other materials in our Librarian Resource Centre. Or if you'd like to discuss product training, including the possibility of a training visit, please get in touch. Thank you for watching.